Welcome back to DVC Weekly. This is episode 155. My name is Jason Erpelding. I'm the broker of Buy and Sell DVC. I'm here with Scott Ferrioli. I'm the owner of DVC-Rental.com and BuyAndSellDVC.com. Today is January 24th, 2024. The 11 month window is December 24th, 2024. Christmas Eve, 20th yeah, in. <laughs> and One. the seven month window is August 24th, 2024. As always, for your rental needs, dvc rental.com. Remember the dash to save the cash. And if you're looking to sell your DVC or buy a DVC, it's buy and sell dvc.com. And on the buy and sell side of things, I just want to mention. Uh, you know, people talk about availability, like, you know, people on, this is on, you know, whether it's a Facebook group, a message board, people will say it's harder to get reservations, uh, versus 20 years ago because, you know, and they, and then they'll say, you know, they'll say DVC is oversold or, you know, they'll say all sorts of different things. Um, but so I just want to cover a couple of things. Number one is you can book at your home resort 11 months in advance. That's the only people. That, if you own at the Polynesian and you go to book at the Polynesian seven to 11 months in advance, you're only competing with other Polynesian owners at that point. You're not competing with the entire pool of the DVC owners. You're just competing with this Polynesian owners group. So it's very likely that you're going to get the reservation or Maybe not necessarily the reservation that you want if you're calling uh, online eight months in advance, but there's very likely there's going to be some availability for what you want between seven to 11 months. Once it's under seven months, then it's, it doesn't matter where you own at that point. You can make a reservation anywhere you want. So you're the entire pool if you will, is open to you, and of course, unless you bought, say, resale and you can't stay at Riviera, but you have all these resorts that you can stay at, and then so can every other member. Um, now, I will say, say this, it's 2024. If you go back to 2009, so there's a 15-year gap, people, yes, are making reservations um, further in advance now than they were, say, in 2009. They're not, uh, there's not as many members making last minute reservations as there was 15 years ago because people know that in order, because if you're a member and you've been a member for a while, you know to make the reservation as early as possible, make your decisions as early as possible of what you want so that you can get what you want. Yeah, I'll throw this in here. I know I've made this example before, but I became a member in 2008 and at the Animal Kingdom Value Studios are always one of the first things to sell out. Always pretty much at the 11 month window now because they're much lower in points. It's the, like the best bang for the buck on property. And when I first bought my contract, like I'd say it was, I think it was like September. I was, I was booking like three months out for the first week of December, which is again, super, super popular time. And I was able to get three Value View Studios at Animal Kingdom three months in advance. So I was like, oh, I just bought DVC. This is wonderful. I want to take my, I want to take my parents and my brothers uh, to, to come stay as well, to come have them check it out. And again, I was able to get a Value View Studio, three of them, only three months in advance. Now that that's sells out 11 months in advance. So just things are very different, you know, 15, 16 years ago. And then um, let's see, what did, what did else I want to mention? I messed you up. I'm sorry, man. No, no. Oh. So, I mean, I wrote on here, availability is there. So I want to make sure you don't believe everything that you read. Um, and then I said, of course, like Alani in the summer, Hilton Head in the summer, and the California resorts are very hard to get to. But for Disney World, you have so many options and so many choices. If you are flexible, you know, you should be able to find reservations. Um, yeah, because uh, there's a... So DVC News is a is a place that people go to get their information. He's a gentleman that, you know, he follows like the, he was at the meeting in December and he was talking about availability on, uh, you know, I don't, do people call it X-Shed or do they still call it Twitter? I don't know. I, I, I think I pretty much refuse to call it X because it's just so ridiculous. So, okay. so it's called Twitter. Okay. 
So on Twitter, somebody was like, he made a comment about availability, and then someone said, you can't get availability. Well, then DVC News goes in, checks resorts, uh, and, he, and this was, I think, eight months in advance, four different resorts, and they, you know, they had full availability. These were Walt Disney World resorts. Mm -hmm. And and so he was like, you know, here you go. There's studios at all these resorts for like the whole month. And so the 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 person that was, you know, complaining, or if you you know, trolling was the word. Mm -hmm. So the person that was trolling was like, you spent all that time, you know, to argue against me and DVC News. Like it took me, you know, 45 seconds to get <laughs> that information. Um, but the point of this is there is availability. You can, you know, find stuff. You can, you know, on the rental side, you can, they can find, uh, you know, because I know that confirmed reservations are very popular as we discussed a few episodes ago, but people are still requesting, like, I'm looking for these dates, I'm looking for these dates, yeah, reservations the, happen. The check availability button, and yet it'll pull up all the availability for, you, for your dates within a couple of seconds. And, yep, yeah, still, that's the best, that's way, the best way to book rooms for the rest, and unless you're looking for something last minute, pretty much. And so I just I just want to say, you know, you're going to find availability. Um, of course, if you can make that reservation 7 to 11 months in advance, then uh, you should have no problem getting it under 7 months. And again, I'm always fighting for reservations at Vero Beach because I don't own at Vero Beach. And I'm trying to, you know, uh, to get those reservations. So, you know, I know how it is when you don't own at the resort. Um, so, and now we're on to the uh, food of the week. Come here, I'm gonna eat ya! Get in my belly! And I see the word chocolate, so I'm excited. <laughs> so for today's Food of the Week, we are, we are at the ABC Commissary in Hollywood Studios where I get the mini chocolate chip cheesecake. I've had a bunch of cheesecakes recently. And these, honestly, these were all within a couple days of each other. Because again, I'll go and get a couple things all together, and then I have to I have to spread it out. I'm trying to do better with my <laughs> with my eating, but mint chocolate chip cheesecake for five dollars and seventy nine cents. The it says chocolate cheesecake topped with cho dark chocolate ganache and whip, whipped mint chocolate chip cream. Now, I I was surprised as I definitely didn't think it was chocolate cheesecake. I didn't I didn't realize it was cho chocolate cheesecake until I was writing up this review. It was. I was like, it just seemed like a regular cheesecake to me. I asked my wife, I said, do you remember it being chocolate? And she said, if anything, I thought it had a little bit of a gingerbread taste to it. That said, it was a really, really good cheesecake. Very smooth, sweet, again, like a typical New York style cheesecake should be. Uh, the mint chocolate topping wasn't overpowering on it at all. Uh, I was very happy with this. I would definitely get this again. Again, this is not as good as the gingerbread cheesecake. But this is also five dollars and seventy nine cents. That one was nine dollars, so it's much better, you know, bang for the buck on it. I give this an eight point three. Very good cheesecake. Very. If you like chocolate and mint, it was a nice combination with the cheesecake. So, very happy with it. It was. It was very delicious. Fantastic. And now we're on to the DVC dash rental side of things. So I'd like to talk about the four different modes of transportation around Walt Disney World property. Um, a lot of people. They, a lot of people who come in will say that they, they have to be on the monorail because they have little kids and they want to be by Magic Kingdom and they don't realize that there's all these other options. So you know, monorail, which you know connects Magic Kingdom and Epcot, that's going to be stopping at your Grand Floridian, your Polynesian, and your Bay Lake Tower slash Contemporary Resorts. Uh, there's also the boats. And truthfully, I, I think some of the transportation is some of the most fun thing at Disney property. Like, I absolutely love the boats. I'll let you, you think about what your favorite transportation is while I'm doing this. I love the boats. So they connect Epcot and Hollywood Studios to Boardwalk, Beach Club, and Swan Dolphin. Also, you know, you've got the, uh, the boat from Wilderness Lodge and uh, you know, Cop Copper, which is Copper Creek and Boulder Ridge, over to Magic Kingdom. And you've also got Old Key West and Saratoga Springs over to Disney Springs. So lots of different boat options at Disney, which I really, really enjoy. Um, you basically, you've got your buses, which will connect you everywhere else. So the buses will not bring you from resort to resort, so you can't be staying at Animal Kingdom and, and go over to Beach Club, but it'll take you to every single park and Disney Springs. And a lot of times Disney Springs, depending on where you decide to go, is a good hub to go to, because then you can go to any other resort from there. It's, 
it makes it easier for a lot of things, especially if you're, sp- so you're staying at Saratoga Springs, you just walk over to Disney Springs, take the bus over there and just essentially it's like a hub and take that to any other resort you want to go to. Uh, last one is the Skyliner, which is the newest one connecting Riviera plus some of the other non-DVC resorts to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Um, originally, everybody was worried about the temperature in the summer because there's no air conditioning. You're just kind of hanging there. I've done it a bunch of times over the last couple of years. Really not an issue at all. So lots of different modes of transportation. Again, my favorite is the boats. How about yours? So, I mean, I would tell you this, not to make your, not to make my yeah. answer complicated, but if, if it's, uh, you know, between November and March and the sun goes down early, okay, definitely love the boat at night. Okay. Like if you're, if you take the boat at night, it's the best. Like that's the best. Yeah. Now, if it's June and you're waiting for the boat ride, it's not as fun, um, at night. Okay. Um, monorail, like let's say you want to look at the different uh, resorts uh, for the how they're decorated for Christmas. Like you got to be on the monorail, you know, cruising around to the resorts. You know, that's ideal. Skyliner, oh, I love, you know, I love the Skyliner. Um, and then uh, I would, I mean, the buses, I don't. Buses are buses. They're yeah. exciting. A lot of times we'll go over to Boardwalk and we'll have dinner at Boardwalk and walk around. And sometimes we'll just hop on the Skyliner and just take take it take it for a lap over to like past Riviera and turn around and just come back just because it, it's fun. It, it's it's like its own it's it's like its own ride and it's beautiful views of everything. You know, you go kind of backstage behind Epcot through the France Pavilion. You can see behind the buildings and everything. So it's just it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Not not just just the transportation portion of it. You know, it's it's a ride. So if you fast forward now to 2044, 20 years from now. 2044, okay. Which one of these four will have more of them in 2044? Will there be more buses, more monorail, more boats, or more Skyliner? I think if anything... I would say probably Skyliner. Or do you think there'll be a fifth one that we're not even thought? I don't, I mean, unless we're doing some like transportation <laughs> stuff, you know, and just, you know, beating me up, I, I, which I hope we're doing by then, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. But I, I think if anything, maybe the Skyliner, I mean, maybe the Monorail, I, it's, it's, I don't say it's easy to expand those, but maybe the Skyliner, the, 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 the boats, I go, you know, they've obviously got to go through water, and there's, it's, I think it'd be hard for Disney to put more waterways, create more waterways, like connecting things. It'd be a lot easier to just, you know, put in a couple poles and extend the Skyliner out further to do something. Or, I mean, I think the Skyliner is probably the, the least expensive and probably the, the one that's most likely to be expanded. I mean, I know, again, I know for years they've talked about expanding the monorail. I feel like if anything, it might be the Skyliner. I feel like that's probably the, the least expensive and le- le- the least intrusive. Do you think it's the least um, or the most cost-effective way, Skyliner versus monorail? Is it Skyliner would win? I don't know if there's a huge difference. I, I think, I think the, the monorail has more like pillars and needs more support. Where the Skyliner is hanging, there's like a lot of times there's a lot less, you know, big... I don't know if pillars are the right t- term, but you know the the pillars, the, the towers that you know you periodically have to get to one of those to keep going. But I feel like there's a lot less of those than what the on the, on the monorails they use a, a, a lot of them. So I figured it'd be probably less expensive to put those out, and you're not pe- you don't have to pay for any of you know the, the track or anything. It's literally just metal and rope essentially. Instead of building a whole track, you got to put electricity through the track. So I, I think the Skyliner would be. Again, I'm not an engineer. I would, I would think it would be less expensive to do than the monorail. And then, you know, does the Skyliner, like, let's say there's lightning in the air, does that get shut down? Because if it does, I don't remember hearing it about it. It does? It, it'll, or if, if bad weather's coming, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, 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 they'll cycle everybody off. So you know, it's not like they just leave you stranded for two hours. They'll, they'll, they'll get you out of there, but they won't be boarding anybody else. They'll quickly, you know, take whatever it is, you know, seven, ten minutes to clear everyone off so that there's nobody on the skyline. Gotcha. Yeah. But yes, they, they, they do have to stop it when 
there's bad, there's inclement weather. Interesting. Yeah, I would guess that there'd be more Skyliner in 20 years. Yeah. That would be my guess. You bust my chops and you agree with me. No, it was just, I because well, I just thought of that because I was like, wait, does the if if Skyliner was majority of transportation at Disney, is that going to cause a lot of delays in June, July, and August when there's more afternoon thunderstorms? It could. I don't think it's been too bad, but I, I can tell you right now, I have I have been stuck at Epcot trying to get back to Riviera when the Skyliner went down, and they told us what I think what happened was they said, oh yeah, go walk down to the a boardwalk and there'll be buses there that will take you over to Riviera. So we went to boardwalk and boardwalk said, we know nothing about this. So they ended up calling an Uber for us and on, on boardwalk, they paid for it, which was really, really nice. But yeah, so it's like that, that one is a little tough because you go, if you shut this down, you know, you're leaving people stranded and they go, I can't get to my back to my Disney hotel. What am I supposed to do here? But so that, that's definitely trickier. And it's something I've personally experienced. So I'm sure, Thousands and thousands of people have experienced the same exact situation where the Skyliner went down and you're stuck there going, now what? Because I think we took the, I mean, back to the boats. I mean, this is a long time ago when we stayed at the treehouse cabins. You know, you take a boat over to the treehouse cabins. Um, yeah, the boat's nice. I, I do enjoy the boats. I, you know, I'm, I'm from Long Island, so I, I, I love the water and I love boats and I go, it's, it's just... It's nice and relaxing. My family and I always try to sit in the back of the boat outside so you've got the air coming in and everything. Instead of being like, you know, inside where everything's enclosed. I like, we like being outside and just enjoying the fresh air and, being, and looking out at the water and enjoying the ride. Have you thought about getting a boat here in Central Florida or? I've thought about it in the past. I know. Oh, you're I right? for you to get one. What kind of boat were you thinking? Were you, I, I mean, not, let's not, say you were actually, thinking. Let's say you were thinking. Boat, like if you were ten percent thinking, I'm what like boat? Something small, like a little like bass boat or something, just so you can take out like on a lake and do like some fishing. Nothing big or like. Well, bass boat. Well, I mean, you have a family of four, like some, you know, like a lot of bass boats. There's only like two guys fishing on. So I don't know if you're like getting like a mini pontoon boat or maybe a little pon. Yeah, not, not, nothing big that you're like taking out into the ocean. It'd be probably just for like going around like little lakes or something like that. Something small. So we go fishing. Sounds fun. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you got some good information out of there. If you have any comments about the availability that you're finding as an owner, uh, please, you know, please share the details. Like, hey, you know, we used to get such and such, now we can't get that, or we always have luck at this resort at this time, booking this far in advance. We'd love to hear. Your um, yeah. Love to hear it. Yeah. Let's come back next week. Yep. Hope to see you again next week. Hope you hopefully you haven't given up on us by now. So <laughs> thanks for watching and coming back. Have a great day.